this is an amazing moment. When I started to make this documentary about Alex Salmond, I thought it might be his political obituary because Labour then were ahead in the polls, favourites to win this election. Now he returns to Edinburgh in triumph, the only First Minister to have been re-elected for a second term and the first to have an overall majority with a mandate to put to the Scottish people a referendum on independence. How did he do it? It's six o'clock on Tuesday, the 5th of April. Good morning, this is Today with Justin Webb and Evan Davis. The headlines this morning, there is heavy fighting in and around Ivory Coast's biggest city. UN helicopters have attacked the presidential compound. Government plans to give poorer children a better hope of getting the nation's best My job. political career was spent at Westminster, but because my mother is Scottish, I've often travelled north of the border. It's evident to me that in Scotland, politics is dominated by one man. Alex Salmon, to my mind, is the only Scottish politician to have made most of his career in Scottish politics, who is well known in England and I dare say internationally. I mean, I regard him as the outstanding Scottish politician, uh, not to have come out of Scotland, but to have remained in Scotland. Since we sat together in the Westminster Parliament, he's quit as leader of his party, bounced back and led it to power in Scotland. Remarkable. As he set off on the election trail this year, I wanted to understand this comeback kid. There was one place I had to go. It's 8 o'clock, you're listening to Newsweek Scotland with Derek Bateman. Good morning. Coming up in the next hour, we hear how the humble chocolate bar plays a role in the civil unrest in Ivory Coast. And we say hello to our Scottish election panel. My Scottish family is from the east side, from Edinburgh. So I know Edinburgh much better than Glasgow. I have been to Glasgow quite a lot. But now we're in the Glasgow Southside constituency. I don't know my way around here at all. Not really the kind of place that looks like a safe Tory seat. But in this kind of constituency, I can see at first hand how Alex Salmond has reached out beyond his traditional party heartland. Hello, how are you? Not bad, yourself? Very, very well. We're going to do some campaigning. As ever, he greets me with a mix of charm and jibe. No, not bad, not bad. Very good. Well, hey, get your incog incognito here. <laughs> you were, were you, were you on their pin-up here, were you? <laughs> no, not exactly. It's not, not good Tory territory. So you're going out campaigning? Yeah, well. yeah. Well, it's just, uh, it's uh, a lovely day for it. Yeah. Well, it's a month to go, but the campaign's hotting up quite nicely. Good, good. So what are you doing? Knocking on doors or doing your shopping centre? You know that well enough. And you feel confident? Uh, yes. I mean, that's... Uh, <laughs> yes, I'm very confident, but uh, nothing for granted. The usual things you yeah, say, neck and neck, the rest of it. Uh, that's very good. Well, we're going to... Yeah? I do, I know Nicola. I I'm very pleased to know Nicola indeed. Good to see you. So this is your patch? It is indeed, Jess. Uh -huh. Yeah, so we're, we're going to trail around with you, if that's all right. Okay. Watch your style. <laughs> Converting a small faction of protest into a party of government has depended at critical moments on Alex Salmon's self-belief as a formidable campaigner. I'm here to see him in action. They'll probably be quite pleased to see us with our television camera and our boom microphone because I know from canvassing and campaigning, nothing attracts attention more than being followed around by a television camera. You're familiar, Andrew? Yeah, oh, of course. Good, uh... <laughs> <laughs> Right, right. Thank you so much. Thanks. I'm good. How are you? Now, now seriously, you, you got a chance of winning this time, have you? We will win. Uh, but, you know, it's about four weeks in the campaign. But, uh, it's going to be a close run thing, but we'll win. Yeah. The Alex Salmond I know from the Commons does not lack self confidence. But there's more to shaking hands and posing with babies than meets the eye. People need to like you, maybe even think you genuine. Politicians who are no good at it make you cringe. But do it well, and it's votes in the ballot box. Of course, in today's environment of political correctness, it simply isn't done to kiss a baby. But Alex Salmon's technique 
everything short of kissing the baby was absolutely superb. <laughs> you know, you know the trouble I'm having is I want to join in. You're having such fun. Well, that's right. I, uh, I, 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 feel, I feel the hand no, going out to, it must, it to must, shake must, the voters. It must, it must be so difficult for you, <laughs> you know, old, old habits and all that. Absolutely. Yeah. But, I mean, you're a natural at it, aren't you? You love campaigning, don't you? Ah, great. I, I mean, uh, I've always loved campaigning. I'm You've always had a reputation of being quite a private man, but you're very outgoing with people. Mm -hmm. That's a slight dichotomy there? Just, uh, I mean, I think you know, in terms of the, you know, the private stuff and family, that's your Scottish tradition, Michael. Yes. We, we tend not to... That's been the Scottish habit, and I think that's the right thing to do in Stella. In terms of your, your uh, family life, you keep that. Uh, but uh, in terms of being out, you know, that's, that's, just, that's just the way I am. You, know, you, you can't actually put this on in Stella. It's, uh, it's you either do it or you don't. A shiver of discomfort at any mention of Alex Salmon's private life. Even those who are very close to him know not to ask after his brothers, sisters, uh, his parents and so on, because it will simply be closed down as a topic of conversation. And the remarkable thing about Alex Salmon's sense of privacy is that he operates in a political age in which entirely the opposite is expected of politicians, where they're supposed to give, bear their souls and, and talk at length about their, their wives, children, and their innermost uh, thoughts and, and demons. Yet Alex Salmond has succeeded uh, despite not succumbing to, to that expectation. But does his private life offer any clues to the man who would become the politician? He grew up here, in Linlithgow. The Lord is my shepherd I shall not want he maketh me to lie down in green pastures Alex Salmon's voice was first heard as a talented choir boy soprano and he said that growing up amongst medieval walls inspired a lifelong love of Scottish history he said himself, and I think there's some truth in this, that his, his parents were typically Scottish in that they were nationalists with a small N. And this is despite the fact his mother was, as he described, a Churchill Conservative and his father was quite a hard left Labour supporter. But they were both fiercely proud of being Scottish and given the, the surrounding Scottish traditions of the Kirk and a distinct education system, Alex Salmond would inevitably have imbibed that, that feeling. I can't resist speculating on how the locality's forlorn and romantic history might have kindled Scottish patriotism in Alex Salmon's receptive heart. As a boy, Alex Salmon would have known the palace at Linlithgow, where Mary, Queen of Scots, was born, who many people thought had a better claim to the throne of England than her cousin Elizabeth. Nonetheless, Mary was beheaded in an English castle at her cousin's orders. And that must have been enough to make the young boy seethe. And maybe this was what set Alex Salmond on his path to nationalism. <laughs>